So comic book movies are supposed to, at the bare minimum, look cool, right? Comic books are full of colorful, iconic, larger-than-life characters. So naturally, a movie that draws on that imagery should be a spectacle, a marvel, if you will. And for the most part, they are. Doctor Strange, Wonder Woman, Iron Man, Thor. Visually engaging. Even movies that lack the basic narrative cohesion necessary to be considered a movie, even those are packed with some striking images. So then why do so many comic book movies, for no reason, end with a fight between the heroes and a big gray villain. It happens a lot. It's a relatively new phenomenon, although we're getting seven or eight comic book movies a year, so maybe it's been going on for a while and you just never noticed it before. But you can go back a mere ten years to the first Iron Man movie. The villain, Jeff Bridges' Obadiah Stane, aka Ironmonger, does not look like that in the comics. He does wear a big giant Iron Man suit, but his is blue. Instead, in the movie, Ironmonger is a big gray version of the Iron Man suit. And then in the next Iron Man movie, Mickey Rourke's Ivan Vanko, aka Whiplash, He's just a guy with whips. He has unusually colored hair and some body armor, which gels with what Whiplash looks like in the comics. Same basic design, even down to the orange jumpsuit that turns into a weird skirt thing. Maybe comic Whiplash also tends to have some purples and green. Iron Man sports primary colors, Whiplash secondary colors, visual contrast, but still, it's close enough. But, for some weird reason, at the end of the movie, Vanko shows up to the big fight wearing a big gray Iron Man suit, making him the Marvel Cinematic Universe's second big gray villain. And the trend continues. Real quick, I'm gonna use the word gray a lot. It's really a catch-all for any dark silver to charcoal, but it's gray in the sense that it's gray. It's about as uninteresting as something like that can look. I mean, think back. Can you remember a villain named Curse? Now, I don't think the word curse is used more than once in the film, but he's one of the bad guys from Thor, the Dark World. Yeah, that explains why you don't remember he exists. He's this silent, hulking figure that works for Malachi, the other bad guy, and Curse fights fights Thor a little bit near the end of the movie. In the comics, he looks like this. Wow. It's very exciting, very bright, kind of tribal. Also, it's kind of reminiscent of Odin's color scheme in the comics. But for some reason, movie curse looked like this. Pretty much the same basic silhouette, but with none of the color. And then in that same movie, you have Malachi the Accursed, who's this evil dark elf, and in the comics, he looks like this. He's got a blue face, and I get maybe why they changed that. He looks a little bit like a frost giant. Who are the villains? in the original Thor. It might have been confusing for everyone but Marvel superfans who are familiar with every single race in all of the Nine Realms. So instead, they gave him this kind of cool black and white look. It's not necessarily gray. There's contrast there. It's different. And then, right before the big fight at the end, Malachi absorbs the ether and becomes a big gray villain. Other examples I really like, Ronin from Guardians of the Galaxy. In the comics, he looks like this. He's got a lot of green to help him stand out among the hundreds of alien races that exist in Marvel Comics. And in the movie, he looks like this. Guardians really was one of the first visually risky Marvel movies, so it's surprising that Ronan didn't benefit from those choices. Also, Ultron. Now, to be fair, the first time we see full Ultron, he's got that silvery white body that we're used to in the comics. It's symbolic of how Ultron is this pristine and sleek technological Marvel. But then, right before the big fight at the end, Ultron upgrades himself and turns into a big gray robot. And I know what you're thinking. Well, how's the design supposed to signify that what we're looking looking at is a better version of Ultron. I don't know, maybe borrow something from the comic Age of Ultron shares a name and virtually nothing else with. Make Ultron gold, give him a bunch of extra arms, I don't know, just don't make him gray. I mean, sometimes gray works. Spider-Man Homecoming's Vulture, a great example of a villain who barely looks anything like his comic counterpart, but has a costume that fulfills an interesting and specific purpose. He's scary, he's big, he's dangerous, he's made of technology, but not your fancy Stark technology, because this guy's a working man, so he's using whatever he can fine. On top of that, Vulture is stealing things in secret, so it makes sense that his costume is mostly black and silver. Bright Vulture green would stand out, although there is a bunch of green in the costume. Sometimes you need to make that kind of change to tell a good story. The problem comes where these comic book movies tend to overuse the gray villain so much that by the time a villain comes around who is also gray in the comics, or who should be gray in the movie, we've seen it a million times, it looks boring. But let's be fair, this is not a Marvel problem. This is an everyone problem. 
and DC might be worse. In Man of Steel, Zod's team all has silver and gray armor, including one of his henchmen who never takes off his helmet, so he's pretty much just a big gray monster guy. Also, in the end of the movie, in an attempt to stop the world engine, Superman has to fly to India to fight some big metal arm thing, I don't know. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice famously ends with, for no reason, big gray doomsday. Suicide Squad actually probably fares the best out of these movies. Not only is Incubus the big bad guy from the end of the movie, not as much gray as he is black, but he has those orange accents that make him look unique. And then you've got Wonder Woman. Alright, so I'm going to spoil a little bit of the movie. If you haven't seen Wonder Woman, don't want to be spoiled, pause right here and skip to this time in the video. I'll give you a second. Okay, I firmly believe Patty Jenkins had a really interesting and different script that was saying something about the genre that hadn't really been said before, and Warner Brothers ripped it out of her hands and wrote Big Grey Villain over the last 10 pages. Because after Diana kills Ludendorff and believes she's ended war on Earth, Steve Trevor shows her that men are naturally inclined to war, and there isn't some big giant god that you can kill to change that. That's cool. It's a take on how a lot of the rest of these superhero movies work, where if you beat the bad guy at the top, all the other problems he's caused go away. And then, out of nowhere, where comes David Thewlis, who turns into a big giant god that she can kill to end the war. And even though Ares traditionally has dark blue armor in the comics, in this version he has silver armor. It's also worth noting that the toys for this movie featured a completely different Ares design. It doesn't look anything like a version from the comics I can remember. Now that gray guy, he's got some color. His arms and his sword are red. His helmet is a white skull. And granted, Legos aren't necessarily indicative of the movies they're based on, Mandarin Lawnmower, but since the design doesn't exist anywhere else, maybe it was at one point concept art for the Ares we saw in Wonder Woman, but that Ares wasn't nearly gray enough, so it got changed. So, true story, I'm almost finished editing this video, and then San Diego Comic-Con happens. A lot of cool stuff. The Hulk is smart now. Every character in the MCU is probably a scroll. Kingsman gave Oberyn a lasso that cuts dudes in half. And then there was a Justice League trailer, which was pretty good. Wonder Woman still looks great. The Flash looks really funny. Alfred's talking about wind-up penguins. And we get our first look at the film's villain, a character called Steppenwolf. Now, before, we'd seen some toys of Steppenwolf that made him look like he's another big gray villain, which doesn't really gel with the character's usual design. When he was created, he was very green, and then he was reinvented, and he was very black and red. And wouldn't you know it, we get our first look at Steppenwolf in the film, and he's a big gray villain. Now, he seems to be wearing some sort of dark silver armor, which looks a lot like someone we just talked about, but forget about those comparisons. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if audiences of Justice League get Steppenwolf and Cyborg confused. It also doesn't help that the two big action sequences in this movie look like they're going to take place in a sewer and a toaster. So good luck telling Cyborg apart from Steppenwolf, apart from Batman, apart from Aquaman. I don't know. And this is especially a problem since almost every fight scene featuring a character I've mentioned so far takes place at night or in a dark room or in space. There isn't any light. So not only are we looking at a gray character, but he's standing in front of a gray background full of smoke. Makes the action really hard to see. But like I said, this is an everyone problem. Problem. The Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer movie, Doom steals the Silver Surfer surfboard and becomes a big gray version of himself. Also, in the fan stick reboot, Doom is this weird gray, green crash test dummy thing who, in the end of the movie, gets a gray cape. You've got the Silver Samurai from the end of the Wolverine, the Future Sentinels from Days of Future Past, even Apocalypse from X-Men Apocalypse is usually way more blue than he ends up in the movie. Speaking of Silver Samurai, if you're seeing him and going, hey, that guy looks familiar, that's because he looks a lot like Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja a Turtles movie. Now, Shredder traditionally wears this light silver armor with a lot of purple fabric hanging off of it. He's in charge of the Foot Clan. Purple is a regal color. It works. But in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot, Shredder is like just this big gray knife monster. And to the movie's credit, the sequel, Out of the Shadows, fixed a lot of the reboot's mistakes. The turtles looked smaller and less like monsters. There were some fun cartoony villains. They even improved on the Shredder design by scaling it back a lot. But when they brought Turtles mega villain Krang into the picture, instead of looking the way he's always looked, he looks like this. No color. I mean, Jurassic World gave us a big gray dinosaur. Edge of Tomorrow made Tom Cruise fight some big gray aliens. You got amazing Spider-Man, Robocop, Battleship. I assume, all gray. And you may have realized I'm leaving out one other franchise that suffers from the big gray villain problem more than the rest of them. As far as I can tell, this franchise started the trend and they continue it to this day. And it all goes back to one man, Michael Effin Bay. Because the G1 Transformers are some of the most creative and distinct animated characters. They have to be, since it would be almost impossible to tell the Transformers apart if everyone didn't have their own unique color scheme. There is a huge focus on making Megatron look different 
different from Starscream, look different from Soundwave, look different from Shockwave. And maybe this isn't 100% on Michael Bay, he probably wasn't drawing all the concept art or animating individual characters, but at some point, someone working on the movie should have stopped and said, hey, hold on a second, we're doing a great job on all these Autobots, but every single Decepticon looks exactly the same. They're all big and gray, no one's gonna be able to tell them apart. It's one of the reasons, as an audience member, I have so much trouble remembering which movie an individual fight scene took place in, because most of them are just a fight between Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and a bunch of gray robots. I mean, look at these guys. Megatron, Starscream, Soundwave, Shockwave, Lockdown, Barricade, Sideways, Blackout, Grinder. Yeah, apparently there are two of these guys and they look exactly the same, I don't know. But, not counting this mess, there is one exception. I genuinely believe the only Decepticon that stands out in this entire series is... Bone Crusher. This guy. He has a different aesthetic than any other Decepticon. He's probably the coolest looking one. It doesn't hurt either that he's in the best action sequence in this entire franchise. But just look at him. He's got a distinct profile, he moves differently than the rest of them, and he's not gray. Now, I don't, I don't know what this comes down to. It could be laziness, it could be budget, maybe it's because that's just how things have been done until now. Maybe the studios know it works and don't want to change it. I don't know. And listen, I have nothing against gray characters. Some of my favorite favorite genes are gray. But guys like Walt Simonson and Gene Colan and Jack Kirby didn't make all these characters colorful by accident. The colors are supposed to jump off the page and tell you something, make you feel a certain way. Everyone was supposed to look different. And yeah, sometimes you would run into a big gray villain, but only sometimes. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree, if you think there are any big gray villains I forgot. Like and share the video with friends of yours that watch movies, especially if they are industry creatives working on future movies like this. I have a podcast called Mad Bracket Status. We make pop culture brackets. It's fun. If you enjoyed the video, give it a listen. We're on Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, all that stuff. And most importantly, subscribe to this channel. I made a bunch more of these. I made one about how Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is influenced by more Marvel Comics characters than you'd expect. And I made one about how Doctor Strange and Green Lantern are surprisingly similar. And finally, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I am at Nation of Nando. That's all I've got. See you next time.